Hello friends, topic for today's video is concept of upper motor neurons and lower motor neurons and its lesions. Let me tell you, everyone is going to ask this topic in all exams, let it be MCQs, theory or viva. So for complete understanding, watch the full video. We will study concept of upper and lower motor neurons and then we will see what will happen in lesions with reasoning. Central nervous system consists of brain, brainstem and spinal cord. Cell body of upper motor neurons are located in primary motor cortex in the brain. And the exons of that neurons travel down as a specific tracts. For concept, consider two bulk of fibers. One set going to spinal cord known as corticospinal tract and another set going to brainstem known as corticobulbar tract. That we will see in the next slide. Corticospinal tract travels downwards to spinal cord and synapses with anterior horn cells in spinal cord. And exons of these cells give rise to peripheral motor nerves which innervates peripheral muscles and are known as lower motor neurons. So we can say that any fibers above anterior horn cells are upper motor neurons and fibers below it are lower motor neurons. Also remember friends, anterior horn cells are also a part of lower motor neurons. Similarly, corticobulbar tract which will relay its nucleus in brainstem and exons from there will emerge out as cranial nerves and it supplies respective areas. All fibers of corticobulbar tract above brainstem nucleus are considered as upper motor neurons and nucleus and cranial nerves proper that emerges out are lower motor neurons. Now how does this system work? Signals are sent from brain through upper motor neurons which in turn controls the lower motor neurons. In short, lower motor neurons are controlled by upper motor neurons. So with this concept in mind, Let's see what happens when there is lesion in either upper or lower motor neurons. First upper motor neuron lesion that is supranuclear lesion. I will tell you findings and its reason behind it simultaneously. In upper motor neuron lesions there will be hypertonia, hyperreflexia and spasticity. It happens because as we discussed UMN controls LMN. So if there is damage to UMN there will be loss of control to lower motor neurons which will react to local stretch reflexes and causes increased tone, increased reflex and spasticity. Next is atrophy. Here there is disuse atrophy because muscle is no longer active as usual. When muscle are no longer in use, they slowly become weaker and becomes atrophied. If we compare these two element lesions, there will be hypotonia, hyporeflexia and flaccidity. It occurs because nerves innervating skeletal muscles are itself damaged. Here also there will be atrophy, but it is due to denervation of motor nerve to skeletal muscle. Additionally, in element lesion, there will be fasciculations, that is, spontaneous contraction of small muscle fibers. It is because of stimulation of few single muscle fibers individually which are still intact. Then coming to main differentiating point, that is Babinski sign. In UML lesion, there will be positive Babinski sign, that is, when you scratch the foot, there will be dorsiflexion or fanning of toes, or we can say plantar is upgoing. In element lesion, Babinski sign or plantar is mute or downgoing. Remember friends, we do not use term negative for Babinski sign. Whenever someone asks, just tell it is downgoing or normal. So friends, I don't think it requires any mnemonic to remember UMN and element lesions, if you understood it conceptually. But for completion sake, just note down the points to remember. Just remember up for UML lesion, that is tone up, reflex up and plantar up. Whereas in the element lesion, remember down, tone down, reflex down and plantar down. So friends, this was all about basic concept of element and UML lesions. Do watch our other videos on neurology. Do like and share our videos as much as possible. Thank you.